All right, let's talk about caregiver fatigue um, during the times of COVID. So um, I am a, a paramedic working for a wonderful EMS company. Um, and uh, whenever all of this happened, a lot of us uh, have been on the front lines, front lines public sector, front lines private sector. And honestly, it doesn't matter which side of the coin you come from, the thing is, is that we all had experienced the uh, onset, the throes, and have our own stories to tell with regards to it. And so, here's the deal. There are other secondary and tertiary effects regarding COVID. It wasn't just if somebody had uh, gotten the illness and had to be treated for it. For us caregivers, um... Sometimes our families didn't want to hear about it. And so that was okay. But uh, consequently, a lot of us were pulling in a lot of hours. And we were blessed for that. However, our families did actually um, incur impact from the energy because, you know, we brought home a lot of stress. For me, I looked at history for a sense of what to expect. My guideline was how the um tuberculosis had impacted the world my mom has stories and if you look you can just google it to see how it impacted the u.s uh, consequently there are sanatoriums that were specifically constructed to house tuberculosis patients and then there's stories about how those people were treated so, my um, guideline of what to roughly expect was very well grounded based on um, the roots of history. And so, what I could tell, you know, here's the deal. Learn what the mode of transmission is and implement that. We all, a lot of us healthcare workers had to take uh, micro 101 and uh, basic micro 101. Honestly, healthcare workers didn't need a supervisor telling them what to do. We look to supervisors for um, leadership, sure. But uh, this is where the critical thinking comes in. We all know what the mode of transmission was. Why weren't you all wearing it? And it's okay. I'm not here to shame anybody. I'm here simply to use my experience to back my sound mind and sound reasoning. So fast forward, working all these hours was good, but it, it uh, impacted my family. And then consequently, I uh, had um, ensued uh, acute care caregiver fatigue and um, depression. So. Whenever somebody is depressed, the most menialist of tasks, tasks could be quite overwhelming. As long as I was in motion outside of my house, I was okay. When I would come home, I was very um, tired and would sleep for like a day or two at a time until it was time to go back to work. And so consequently, my house had become a shambles. So, anybody who had intruded on my house and taken a good look, I hope you got a good look because that's what happens when you are serving the light. I am a light worker in the sense that I do have a sense of altruism for humanity. So, consequently, um, I don't think I'm the only healthcare worker whose home has sustained a wreck and a shambles because of various reasons of uh, fatigue and depression. So now I'm trying to get back on track with my life. I had a carbon monoxide detector go off when I had no electricity, go figure it out, um, and had to call in 911 for fire. It was so embarrassing to have fire come in like that, you know, and uh, me, 
uh, and had to explain, yes, I was feeling suicidal. I was. And I uh, was depressed. And now I'm trying to get back on track with my life. But um, believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. Consequently, caregiver fatigue, it's a real thing. And then if you look on the uh, Facebook and internet, people have their own stories to tell with secondary and tertiary effects from COVID. For instance, um, a 12-year-old boy committed suicide on a whim because he was basically, in a sense, isolated from his peers. Why was he isolated from his peers? Because everybody had to go on lockdown due to COVID. So anybody who has uh, intruded on my home and reported to whoever, you know what, I'm gonna tell you something. You're picking on a good woman whose only crime was to work a bunch of hours and come home and sleep. And then to circumvent depression, man, you just gotta get out of the house. Go do something happy. Go do a hobby. My hobbies are drumming, belly dance, fire spinning, videography, photography, I can even sew, I'm an awesome seamstress, and makeup, and you know, obviously, dressing up. So, that's Little Flower. Anybody who says otherwise, come talk to me, get to know me. I will be happy to fill you in. However, uh, yes, COVID, caregiver fatigue, very real thing. And that's what's going on in my life. And um, consequently, uh, I'm sorry to say, I did ask and reach out for some friends. And they have their own business to deal with. They're going through their own depression. And I have mad respect for that. I do have one friend that uh, has been helping me out on the home front. And mad, mad respect to you, lady squirrel. We're going to be gypsy rich, honey. And with regards to Gypsy Rich, I uh, lean on my faith. And guess what? If it makes me unbalanced or crazy because I do believe in Jesus Christ. And consequently, I do believe in the law of attraction. And uh, dabbling into manifesting with a sense of alchemy. So be it. Just because somebody believes in something different than you, are you going to say they're crazy? Are you going to say they're unstable? And um, I did reach out to my Christian family to tell them I was being gang stalked. No help. It's okay. We all have our own road to bear. So with conjunction of uh, caregiver fatigue, I've actually been gang stalked and gaslighted this season. So anyways, just throwing it out there. I don't care who believes me, but somebody out there I know needs to hear this because I'm not the only one going through this. Anyways, peace for now. This video is about caregiver fatigue and my account of uh, COVID during the year of 2020 and uh, why my house is in a shambles. Peace for now.